Cheers. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome back to the Underground Broadcast. Cheers. <sighs> Let me just do something little here. Something, something, something little here. There we go. Cheers. Super Saiyan Joku. Cheers to Gomer Kyle. Let me hit it for these assholes who are here tonight live. On a Friday night, coming to you from the Dud Channel. Here we go. Uh, Super Saiyan Joke, who? I want to have the world, the world's most comfortable pair of ultra soft. <laughs> Cheers, Joku. And cheers, Gomer. Here's your intro, motherfucker. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pie. Private Pile, I'm going to give you three seconds to wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you. One, two, three. Shazam. Cheers, Gomer. I'm having some trouble here with my headsets pissing me off. There we go. Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Testing. One, two. There you go. Now I can hear myself. I think I need a new cord or something. Anyways, happy 420 or 419 tomorrow. Technically it's 420, but it's all 420 all day, every day. Cheers. Again, unfortunately, we are broadcasting from a dud channel. Uh, we're calling it the Emergency Underground Broadcast Channel. Uh, until we're able to broadcast on the main channel live, we will be broadcasting on this one. In the meantime, you don't have to subscribe to this one. But if you want to see it live, I guess you do. Or just check on the main page on Thursday night or Friday. On Friday. And the link will be up there on the main page. Like it is right now. Uh, so yeah. And then we also have a third channel I made so that we don't get banned. And I'm calling it the Illegal Underground Broadcast Channel. I recommend you actually search for that one and subscribe. Uh, because this Sunday, April the 21st, we're going to watch uh, AEW Dynasty. And it's going to be badass, y'all. Uh, Brian Danielson's going to fight. The best wrestler in the world, Will Ospreay, and uh, Samoa Joe is fighting Swerve Strickland. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's going to be badass. It's going to be a good match. It's a good match. So we'll be watching it here, keeping it uh, 6 p.m. Sunday live. If you want to know the link, if you don't want to subscribe to the Illegal Underground Back broadcast, Go to the main channel page on Sunday, and the link will be there. I'll see you guys there and shit. I'll also post it on the social medias. You know what it is. Uh, cheers to y'all. Uh, tonight's show is going to be full pull of X-Men 97. We're going to review that ass. Review more of James Gunn's leaks and bullshit he posts on social media. Got all of the Fallout uh, review for you all. And, of course, we got Celebrity Ass for everyone tonight so we'll make sure you keep in tune for that but as always we're gonna get started by reading the motherfucking comments here is the social medias uh, twitter at son of man 665 and uh, instagram the underscored underground underscored broadcast and at tiktok it's at the underground broadcast but for whatever reason apparently we are currently in a TikTok ban. Fuck you, TikTok. Let me explain to you what's going on. Our videos, at an average, would get 200. Then look at that one has 400 views at the bottom. 200 views, average. Every video was getting always 200 views and shit. Nobody was liking it, but at least people were looking at it. At least one time, you know. But now, all of a sudden, last week... We're lucky if our videos even get more than five. I mean, some of them are not even getting ze uh, zeros and shit. So I think TikTok has shadow banned me on t and why for what for looking different and shit. Apparently, I'm too woke even for the Chinese. God damn it! I'm fucking pissed off. 
This, if this ain't communism, I don't know what is. So now I cannot speak my mind or look who I want on TikTok. Fuck you. I gotta be like some 14-year-old girl with big boobs and shit for me to get minutes of views. Fuck you, TikTok. Anyways. Yeah, so I don't know what's going on. We're banned, apparently. Shadow banned, officially, on TikTok. Fuck you. Uh, but let's get back to it. Uh, whatever you send me on uh, the Instagrams or in the Twitters or all that ass, I'll post it here. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Just anything you want, you know. Uh, just Super Saiyan Joku sent me this on my Instagram. Son of man, I already know your show is the shit at the Underground Broadcast. And my dogs think so too. Nimbus and Chi Chi. Oh, yeah, that's badass. I'll make sure to scoop up the nerd news later. Cheers. Mud flowers. Hashtag. Live. I clicked the other button there by mistake. Sorry about that. I think they got into my stash. Hashtag 300 milligrams THC candy. Hashtag marijuana. Hashtag smoke weed every day. Hashtag DBZ. Yeah, that's uh, 300 milligrams of hashish citrus. Uh, they're like candy or what? They're like, they look like little, like, like Altoids or something. It's crazy. Hey, did you just get your dogs groomed? Is that why they have those little bandanas? Oh, yeah. Look at them motherfuckers. They look like they just been groomed and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got, yeah, I should show you pictures of my little dog and shit. My little dog's bigger than yours, but this is this a little dog, too. Hey, chairs for you dog people and shit. Pick up your dog shit. Don't just leave it on the floor, you dicks. Chairs. Joku, thank you for that. All right, let's get into uh, the motherfucking comments, y'all. Uh, McMahon hater. Oh, <laughs> Jessica Alba joins Deadpool and Wolverine. Don't you mean Simp Pool and Wolverine? Yeah. At this point, Deadpool is so popular that even like the 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 non comic book, you know, losers know what Deadpool is and shit. They won't know about like fucking, you know, Red Hulk or anything like that, but they'll know Deadpool. And it's like, oh, fuck you. Everybody now, now it's a household name. My grandma knows Deadpool and shit. Thanks a lot, Kevin Feige and Marvel. You dumbasses. Hey, cheers. McMahon hater. Thank you for commenting. We hate him too. Uh... Oh, D post on, on, the, on, on, on the podcast video. He says... Another great broadcast. Oh, yeah. He also put on the Jennifer Aniston and Sandra Bullock short video. Jennifer Aniston and Sandra Bullock are discussing in secret how to lure Brad Pitt back to the spider cave. PXXXX from Jennifer. Oh, yeah. Hey, they could lure me any day. That's all I'll say. I mean, I think Sandra Bullock lives here in Texas. Oh, not too far from here either. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt's in a lot of trouble right now. He's over there beating his kids and shit. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that because I got some other shit to talk about, but it's out there. I think we talked about it one time. I don't know. Deep Pulse also says that. Women who use cocaine age rapidly, often exhibiting grandmother skin by the age of 50. It's true. And not just women, uh, just anybody in general. You see, like, motherfuckers that look like they're 80 and they're, like, 60. Mm-hmm. You're like, what the fuck, bro? Like, ain't it weird? Like, I don't know, look. If you know drugs and you've been around people who do drugs, ne not necessarily you have done the drug, but I can tell you I can fucking, I've never done it. And, uh, I've never been around people who have done it when they're doing it or anything like that. But I can tell you enough, I know that I could, like, if I see a person and, and, and it's somebody who's on meth, 
you know, a meth head, I could right away be like, like that guy fucking, that guy's a fucking meth, or that guy does meth. I could tell right away he's got all these fucking scabs all over his arms and scabs everywhere and shit. Teeth are missing. Ah, oh, I see a lot of those people and shit, man. I don't know why you want to be awake for two, three days, four or five days a week. What the fuck? Go to sleep. Sometimes dreams are badass. They're better than real life. That's all I'm trying to say, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see, let's see. Uh, fuck. Denise Richards. Also, deep post on the Denise Richards video. He says, Denise Richards is a self-made woman, yet her appearance appears to be artificially altered through plastic surgery, creating a contradictory, contradictory impression. And shit. Puts a laughing emoji. Oh my god. I think the smoke got in my eyes. My eyes are tearing now. And I have nothing, nothing to fucking wipe the tears off my face. Much like my everyday life and struggle. I just gotta suck it all up. Mm. It's okay, guys. Don't ever let them see you cry. Never. <laughs> tears depose. Thank you for commenting and shit. Depose also says on the Matthew Underwood speaks out about being child molested by these perverts on fucking uh, uh, Nickelodeon and shit. Matthew Underwood sporting a crisp broccoli haircut requires funds for purchasing anal bananas to lure Puff Daddy to babysit him. <laughs> he might be a little too old to be babysit right now and shit, but you know, that's what it is. I'll tell you one thing. Um, Unfortunately, I had that Broccoli haircut. Well, I mean, I don't know about that uh, when he when he was young, when that, that that little fro and shit. I had a big fro and shit. I had a big because I was letting my hair grow and when my I have really curly hair, and so before my hair gets long and shit, it's really it's really puffy. And then I had a fro and shit. So I was that that kid in at school with that with the afro that wore makeup and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody liked me, dicks. If I was if I was in high school right now, I'd be the most popular kid in school. God damn it. Things things have changed nowadays. That's all I'm saying. Anyways, cheers. Deep post. Alright, let's see what else he put here. He also put on the Puff Daddy's past is exposed. Deep post says Puff Daddy's back in town to babysit goat. Uh Puff Daddy's in some serious shit right now. And I don't think he's gonna get out of it. That's it. He's done. <clears throat> take that, take that, take that. It's over. Diddy. Son of a bitch. Uh he says also, now she looks fresh. In half a year, she will have that crack crystal M look. He's talking about Diddy when he adopted that little girl. That was the most fucked up. And like I said, I didn't even have to edit that video. I just showed you that video, man. <laughs> that guy's like, they're celebrating that they just picked up some 13-year-old off the street. It's just the most fucked up video in the world. And he puts it on Instagram, like all celebrating. That's right. Papa Combs just picked up a kid off the street. He's going to take care of her. Oh, yeah. Fucking purrs, man. <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein, if there ever was one, man. The black Jeffrey Epstein right there. God damn it. Cheers, Depose. Oh, Doug, unfunny. Let me hit it for this dick. Well, get back. Doug, unfunny. On the fucking uh, celebrating OJ Simpson's death, he puts, may he rot in hell. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck that guy, bro. Like, nobody, nobody is happy about it. Everybody's, everybody's like, yeah, good, good. No, everybody's happy that he died. Everybody's like, fuck that guy. Nobody gives a shit celebrating his He's got no legacy. The only legacy he left is in the recording of the, of the audio of that poor lady screaming. Somebody to help her save her life because this fucking guy's stabbing her. Fuck you. All right. 
Uh, cheers, Doug on Funny. Thank you for that grim shit. Son of a bitch. Anthony Timmons. Oh, and the Jonathan Majors got away with it. He says, he got off easy, son. If that was you or me, we would have to give up our balls and serve a life sentence. I fucking agree 100%. If I would have grabbed some little white girl half my age and, and half my size and thrown her tr into the car and then uh, fucking, you know, broken her fingers and tore her ear by mistake, supposedly, and then ran around the streets and shit like the way they were doing. I'd, I'd still be in jail right now since then that, that I got arrested. This motherfucker that night he got let go. Motherfucker that night I would have been in jail and I still would have been in jail right now. The judge, I, I'm like, we're not going to see the judge. Shut the fuck up. My, the same makeup from that night still smeared on for months. They don't even let me take a shower. That's what it would have been like right now. And shit, I'm over there living in my own shit. There's shit right there in the corner. There's just a pile of shit. I've been taking there for months. Uh, but Jonathan Majors got away with it. Fucking bullshit. Anyways. Cheers, Timmons. I agree with you. Timmons also says, on the celebrating O.J. Simpson's death, Ah, uh, do you feel sadness? No, probably because there isn't any. Fuck that guy. Cheers, son. Cheers, Timmons. Fuck O.J. Simpson. Fucking... Piece of shit. Didn't even have the decency to fucking say the truth. You, you lived a miserable life. You should have confessed, you piece of shit. Uh, Timmons continues on the deciphering McMill video. I don't know who that is, but as far as I'm concerned, anyone even hanging around Diddy is suspect as hell. Oh, hell yeah, anyone that hung out with Diddy. For sure, it's because they saw the way he is and shit. We seen the videos. We see the way he is. He's basically the black uh, Kevin Spacey or the black Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein. That's what he is. Kevin Spacey. He just likes to grab people's asses and dicks for no reason. Just like, hey, come here, motherfucker. He starts grabbing dicks and shit. Hey, calm down, man. That's the way he is. Fucking perv. Fuck that guy. Uh, on the Alyssa Jordana got arrested video, Timmons. He says, accountability is bitch crip tonight. Yeah, she got knocked the fuck out. That's what she gets. We went a little viral on this video. I'm going to explain. I don't, we got a, a, a lot of views. I don't remember, like 700 or something like that. Everybody wants to see this bitch get, get beat the fuck up by this guy, by this loser. <laughs> DJ New Kid on that same video, he only puts laughing my ass off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cheers, DJ New Kid, son of a bitch. Um, oh, Rockle, fuck my life. Let me hit it for the Satanist. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. Rockle. On that same video of Elisa Jordana arrested, he says, This bitch is crazy. Lock her up. Yeah, she went to jail. I don't know for maybe an afternoon. Then she sucked somebody's dick. Couple guys, maybe a couple cops. Then the, the gang banged her and they let her go. Uh, and now she's boyfriends with the with one of them. I think and that's what I heard. I don't know. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. That's just the, the rumor going around. Uh, Anthony Timmons on the J.K. Rowling's has troubled children. Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson are both weirdo twats. I'm with J.K. Rollins on this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he also commented on the Scream 7 is a cash money, money grab. The last four movies have been a cash grab. I quit watching after three. Man, I only saw the first two and that's it. Mm. I didn't even bother after three because when they announced they were doing part three, I'm like, why? Why? And they keep going and shit. Started from what she wrote a book and she made it into a movie. They were filming the movie. Yeah, that's enough already. You know, at least with the little Mexican girls, it was going a different direction. But the little Mexican girls want to stand up for the brown people in the Palestine. And then the white Nazis over there in Israel fucking fired the little Mexican girls. And now there's not fucking a shitty seven movie. It's going to be the same thing as the other ones and shit with Sidney Prescott. 
Oh well, here we go. Cash money grab. Cheers, Timmons. With your ass. Max Power, 2511. Annalisa Jordana arrested. What is this even? You look like a fucking clown. A fucking or a fucking, you dumbass. At least you say it right. Max Power. You know what? I'm going to give you a DJ horn only because I know who Max Power is. Max Power! Oh, yeah! That's the fucking guy that fucking Homer Simpson was pretending to be. He was gonna be Max Power. And shit. You idiot. Cheers! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Homer's uh, pretend. Pretend. I think that was pretend thing that he wanted to be. He wants to be Max Power. Ha <laughs> ha! Benny C6694 and the Lisa Jordana uh, got arrested video. Women want equal rights but aren't prepared for equal lefts and the consequences accountability for their shitty actions. Yeah, yeah. You want to be treated the same? Okay, well this is what happens when you hit someone in the fucking face, you whore. That's all I'm saying. That's the way you want to be treated equally. That's what happens. Somebody hits me, a guy hits me in the face, he's gonna get hit back. You hit a guy in the face, you're gonna get hit back, you bitch. I saw a video on TikTok or or, or Twitter, or something like that. They're, uh, they're in an airplane. And this white lady uh, is accusing some black dude of stealing her, her sunglasses. And the guy's all like, I, I didn't touch anything. I've been sitting here the whole time. I don't know what you're talking about. And she's all like, whatever. And uh, the guy stands up like, like, okay, just sit down. You're making a scene. And she fucking slaps him. And everyone in the plane goes, <gasps> and he goes, I am going to give you 10 seconds to apologize. And he starts counting. And the lady's like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And he uh, counts to 10 and he goes, you're not going to apologize. And she goes, no. Boom. Fucking punches her and decks her down. <laughs> I'm like, what do you think was going to happen? He even gave you an opportunity to say you were sorry. You dumb bitch. That's all I'm saying, man. Like, at some point, there is fucking ground to hit a woman. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Because Just because you're a woman doesn't give you a right to fucking say, I can do whatever I want. No, no, no. Because we don't go around doing whatever the fuck we want. Because if we did, we'd be in jail the moment I stepped out of the house. Right away. All right, but I always look left and right and make sure there's not a cop before I do what I'm doing because then I will go to jail. You gotta be sneaky, sneaky. That's how I do it and shit. You know, make sure no one's looking. You know, and then you fucking take it out or whatever. But someone's looking, you fucking go ahead and hide and shit. There's bushes, there's trees, all that shit. You're walking around and shit. You try to look as conspicuous. I wear a fucking hoodie sometimes. I don't look like I look like that guy. What was it, Trayvon Martin? Nobody knows who I am. That's all I'm saying. Keep it discreet. All right, don't walk around like you know what you're doing, all right? Dumbass. Cheers, Benny. Oh, Rocco, fuck my life. I think I already fucking played an intro for this guy, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Fuck you, Rocco. I'm not playing it twice. A J.K. Rowling's troubled kids. He says, son of man, Rowling will send them Dementors Suck the life out of your makeup wearing ass. Cheers. Hashtag. Live. Hashtag. Live. Oh, yeah. Go murder. They're using your fucking hashtag. Fucking uh, Rocco. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Rollins can send whatever she wants to suck the life out of me any night. Oh, yeah. Cheers, J.K. Rollins. <sighs> Hottest British lady in the world. All right, all right. Elisa Jordana's arrested video. A guy named Wes Martin, 3829. He says, 
Okay. Oh, this guy looks like D. Like, what's his name? Rodney Dio or Henry Dio? You know, the guy who used to be in Sabbath? He looks like him and shit. But anyways, he says, Okay, good reaction. First time seeing you. What's your story? <laughs> okay, my story. I'll try to do it in a nutshell. I am an American Mexican, and I say American Mexican, meaning that I was born in America, raised by two ignorant Mexicans who didn't know any English. Imagine that, and shit. I went through most of my childhood persecuted because I decided to wear makeup and look different than everybody and be woke as fuck beyond my years. All right? Until finally, 40 years later, the world has changed around me, has come around to finally accept a person as myself. So I come out of hiding and shit. And then I find my best friend from a, for, for over 20 years. And we start a, po po a podcast and shit. And it turns out that the fame, the YouTube fame and, and all the attention got to him. And he was a pussy and he quit. That son of a bitch. It's a lead 10 weeks into it. Here we are 10 weeks into the brand new underground broadcast. And here I am. With 560 something subscribe, 80 something subscribers. It's shit. Hopefully you subscribe and don't unsubscribe. That's the story of the channel so far. Cheers, Wes Martin. I just ran out of another beer. Oh yeah, I try to keep the beers over here so you all see that I'm actually getting drunk with y'all. All right, let me get another one over here. Oh shit, I don't know if I should open that one. I dropped it. All right. Oh, thank God. Cheers. A little bit of foam right there for you, Martin. <sighs> Spilled it all over the place. All right, all right, all right. Let's see who's next. Anthony Timmons on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And Digimon action, live action movies. I don't know what to think about another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies. Turtle dick, hard pass for me. No thanks. And Digimon, yeah, Hollywood is definitely on life support. As long as they do the original Digimon, like Tai, Agumon, that story, I'm down. Uh, I really am. I don't know which villain they would choose. I really hope they would choose, um, what's that guy's name? It was like a really bad, like, it was like a clown or something like that. I forgot what his name was. Jokermon or something like that. And there was also a, a, a metal gray mon. There was like four of them. It was badass. That, that, that fucking arc. It was like season two or season three. That one was badass. Uh, yeah. Timmons also on the Jon Snow show is dead says that George R. R. Martin is a waste of oxygen. Ah, I have to agree right now out of everything. Yes, they're taking too damn long to doing anything. I mean, I've been waiting for House of Dragon season two since forever. I mean, I binge watched all of Game of Thrones in between and I was, they still haven't released season two. They're barely going to start Dunkin Egg and Jon Snow show is dead. So, yeah, I'm, I'm still pissed off about the whole situation. All right. Cheers, Timmons. Under Peruvian skies. Under the Elisa Jordana arrested video. He puts what the fuck in a laughing emoji. Sure, I'll take it. Cheers, Under Peruvian skies. Evil Rick 95. He says, Damn, I on the Lisa Jordana got arrested. I didn't know she did more. I thought it was just a backwards hand slap to the face, and then he did what everyone was thinking. What? Nothing. What I meant to say was, I'm glad to see the shoe was on the other foot and no one did heavy physical damage, but damn, he warned her and everything, called her bluff, and then he had a full house on the river. <laughs> he continued, 
And he said, um, he sent her millions. She used to work on the Howard Stern show and she gets hella donations. Well, I'm sure up until now, but he's donated the most story is millions. Oh, he, he's supposedly a Dubai princess son. That fucking loser. Damn it. Or some shit like that. But he has enough money to donate millions. But yeah, I love the ending where the dude got to go free. Well, yeah, when you're all with Dubai's prince's son. Of course, you can grow free from paying a prostitute millions of dollars and then pulling her hair. Pull over, you dumb cut. <laughs> Cheers, evil rig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Um, trans oceanic outreach, trans oceanic art. Oh, there's a woke as fuck motherfucker that runs a transsexual outreach program in the ocean somewhere. That's badass. This guy's helping the community, everybody. Under Lisa Jordana's arrested, he says, on the top right of the screen. Oh, he's talking about me. What am I even looking at? It's like a diseased and rotten vulva has been sewn onto a man's leathery face. Hey, fuck you! How are you su su supporting the trans people by writing shit like this? You fucking racist piece of shit! Fuck you! I'm still gonna give you the DJ horn because you got us a view and you commented and we went viral on this video. Cheers! <laughs> You racist. Uh, Spez, Spez K81 on the Elisa Jordana video. He says, bro, what the fuck is that shit all over your face? Your man. Yo, man, you got some major Joker vibes. This is called cover girl, motherfucker. All right. And it's expensive as fuck. All right. Doesn't matter where you go. All right. Easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. Motherfucker, you better learn it. All right, the times are changing, fellas. You better get on it. You better get on it. All right, they're not going to be lubed up. That shit's going to be raw as fuck. But you better get on it. Strap on. Get ready. It's changing. Cheers. Spes K81. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Let's keep going. You're fucking around too much, fellas. Anthony Timmons on Five Nights at Freddy's 2. He says, I never cared about Five Nights at Freddy's. I never thought of it as a horror. The games are boring. Well, yeah, because the games were made for fucking five-year-olds to be entertained and scared. Who the fuck's to be a fucking afraid of a pussy-ass fucking mechanical teddy bear and shit? No one. But your five-year-olds like this shit. The movie was okay. It was kind of weird. and you know, It was not that scary. You know, nothing R. There were no tits or nothing. So it's like, whatever. It wasn't bad. It was weird. I never saw it. So there you go. Anyways, we're moving on. Thank you, Timmons, for that ass. Ugh. Y'all fucking commented too much. I'm dr I, I still have to drink for Timmons. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm having trouble keeping up with the burping and the drinking and the reading of the comments, you dicks. <sighs> Super Saiyan Joku. Oh, on the celebrating OJ Simpson's death, he says, It's sad that he dies not knowing who killed his wife. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> he says. And Maury is wrong. He is the father of Khloe Kardashian. Cheers, Mother Flowers. Hashtag. Live. Ah, yeah. Super Say Joku killed it on that comment, motherfucker. God, two zingers in one. <laughs> Fucking Joku. Cheers, Joku. J 
Joku on the deciphering make meal. He says, new name, drills, cheek mills. Ah, it's a shame. A peanut coming out of a shell. Cheers, Mo Flowers. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He just tries in denial. They make me out. There's, there's plenty of black gangsters that are gay. There ain't nothing wrong with it. You know, you still got a gun. You still got a gun. You still a gangster. Just, you know, you also like dick in the ass. There's nothing wrong with that or in the mouth. Or you put in the ass or in the mouth. It doesn't matter as long as it's gay stuff. That's what you like. That's what you like. You're still a gangster. As long as you have a gun and you shoot people, you're still a gangster. All right. No one's no one's denying that. All right. Fucking guy. Cheers. Oh, it's none other than this channel's motherfucking very own Canuck and D Phantom. Let me hit it for this asshole. Indie Phantom and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Digimon live action movies. He says, Aw, yeah. R rated. They should have done that for the Megan Fox ones. Oh, that's badass. Turtles need to be retired, but I love the rat dude. Cheers, son. Cheers, Indy. We love you. You're being safe. I hope you're being safe out there in the road, motherfucker. You get that money. <sighs> if you're ever in Texas, hit me up. You can stay here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm serious. I ain't lying. Ah. Oh, let me make sure this is the last comment or not. It is the last comment. Oh, no, it's not. He, he left three. That son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he left three cards. I thought he only left one. All right. We got none other than Houston owns Jose Trevino. Let me hit it for this asshole. Tu nombre, por favor? Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ¿ok? <laughs> Tienes envidia, puto. <laughs> Cheers, Joku. Trevino, you motherfucker. Uh, let me read his comment before I get too drunk. What up, gay? I mean, woke as fuck, fella. Aw, oh, yeah. Great as great show as usual. You playing my intro when I showed up made me blush. Ah, thanks. <laughs> Anyway, that video with that hot chick was brutal. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I like it. Jordan, Lisa Jordana. Forgive me, I know I'm a biased simp for the chick, all right? But it seems like he literally ripping her nose off several times. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was going like that. That was badass. It's all right, she has enough money, she could just get a new one, motherfucker. Anyways, I'm kind of excited because she's kind of connected to this thing called the dabble verse what what the fuck are you talking about it's hard to explain but i hope you and the woke pack get sucked in one day i said too much already cheers hashtag uh hashtag oh wait ha hashtag world order yeah um, Damien, you, you threw me off because I'm all like, now, what the fuck are you, the dabble verse? I have to look into that. Does anybody right now on the comments know what the fuck this asshole's talking about? I got to get into it. This is some kind of like, like porn club or something you all are into. I had to check it out. But Trevino also continued. And he said, facts, son. 
AEW lost and WWE doesn't even have to respond. Would you complain if some tardy guy shot himself taking a crap about talking crap about you? Yes, AEW is tardy. Even if CM Punk did lie, that fool Luke Perry's son is such an unlikable white Hollywood privilege motherfucker, and I hate using the privilege deal, but our mug was bo was born with a silver spoon up his Well finish it, you fucking guy. You just put dot 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 dot. Did you finish it on the next one? No, no, you finish uh, you said something else. Hey motherfucker. Ah Yes. Number one, there will never ever, and I and I I don't think I ever said I don't I never said that it was, and I'll say it right now there was there was never a, an actual like competition towards WWE because WWE by its name and by the fact that it has over forty years ahead of any competition or thirty years at least, um, there's no. AEW is the closest just because of the money Tony Khan has, but doesn't mean at any level because there's people that watch WWE that don't even know that AEW exists, that don't even know Kenny Omega exists. There's people that watch WWE that don't, don't know nothing about AEW. Like, you have to actually be an actual wrestling fan that you like wrestling and you look all the other companies to know what AEW is. But if you're just a AWE fan, that that's all you watch. Because I've met, I've met, you know, some of my friends have kids and shit, and I asked them because I'm a wrestling fan. And they watch WWE, and I asked them questions, and they, one hundred percent, and these are kids, they believe that Raw, SmackDown, and NXT are three different companies, and that they're not even. The same company. They do not understand that. And these are just, these are children. That's what I'm telling you. They don't know about AEW. I asked them, like, they're like, who's that? What are you talking about? Because in their world, the only thing that exists is what's on fucking the major television channels and what's on fucking what's fed to them. And that's WWE because that's the way it is. So there is no fucking competition. There never was. AEW is. Where the majority of the best wrestlers wrestle doesn't mean that that's the best company. It just means that is the company where the majority of the best wrestlers in the world are at right now. WWE has a few of the best wrestlers in the world. A few. But about 90% of their talent are circus performers. They're badass. I like a lot of their gimmicks. They're badass, perfect performers, and I would pay hundreds of dollars to go see them. I would. I love their gimmicks, and I love their performances. But when it comes down to it, AEW is where the majority of the world's best wrestlers are currently wrestling. That doesn't mean that their show is the best show in the world. It's not. And that's what they need to work on. AEW is not going anywhere. Because those that Arab that his dad, those Arab motherfuckers got that Saudi Arabia money. That ain't going and they're not going anywhere. Uh but until they change their ways, their ratings aren't going anywhere either. So yeah. Jose Trevino, you win this round, motherfucker. Cheers. Uh his last comment. And I think it is. Let me just make sure some, some troll suddenly didn't comment and shit. No, this is the last one. One more thing. I was imagining the eclipse kind of like how it gets dark in Dragon Ball Z when they summon the dragon. Too bad it didn't go dark over here. It was basically dark the way it gets in westerns at night. Um. Yeah, Tremino, I think you were supposed to be in the path like me. Let me see. Oh, no, I think you might have been more east of me. I was right in the center, motherfucker. It, pretty, it got pretty dark over here, bro. It looked like at least seven or... It's because it's... It's hard to tell since the, the time changed. Because I go outside and they're still late. It's like almost eight and their sun's still out. But no, it was darker than that, man. 
I mean, it was it was pretty. I mean, I saw the stars, bro. So not all like the whole night sky was in full of stars. It wasn't like that. But there were some stars, like probably the brightest stars in the night sky. They were there suddenly, and now and it was more than one. I was all like, "There's fucking stars." So where I was, because I was right in the center, it did get fucking dark, man. It really did. Uh, cheers, Jose Trevino. I'm glad you got to experience it, <clears throat> cause um, it won't happen again in our lifetime for at least forty years. So you and me will both be dead and shit. Unless we find ways to make clone bodies and then transfer our consciousness into them. Or at least our data or into our fucking consciousness into a robotic being like Elon Musk is doing. And shit. That's the only way we'll get to witness it again. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, cheers, Jose Trevino. Love you on this channel. Thank you all for commenting again. Anything you send me to my social media is on the Twitter, on the Instagram. And you can't send me shit on Twitter, on TikTok. And apparently we are on a TikTok ban. We're getting shadow banned and shit. Anything you send me, I will go ahead and post on this channel and shit for you motherfuckers. Uh, there's the shit. Thank you for commenting and all that ass. Um, and I'm just going to say uh, cheers to each and every one of you for that. I'm juggling beers. That's two. Number three still here. All right. I just realized the other one I hadn't finished it, but this one's about right here already. I'm juggling beers and shit. Uh, let me just uh, forgive me for that. And let me make sure my makeup's okay, and it is. And we're gonna head right into it, cause I don't need to piss, motherfuckers. Cheers, you all. Happy Friday. I hope you're having a good time. Welcome to the underground broadcast. It's Friday night. Pre-Eve, uh, 420 Eve, and we're going to get started with your weekly pop culture breakdown. Oh, fuck you. There we go. We just got fucked over because the intro doesn't want to start on me. <laughs> the intro I'm pressing the goddamn button it won't start son of a bitch alright I'll have to fix that for next week I don't know why the intro's not working but anyways we're gonna start with the biggest dumbass of the week and it should be me apparently <laughs> one of these days I'm gonna have a white guy doing all the buttons and shit now I don't have to worry about nothing but being in front of here getting drunk and high but anyways, the biggest dumbass this week besides myself is apparently none other than, uh, I don't know if he's still quarterback of the Green Bay Packers, but Aaron Rodgers? Motherfuck, remember this guy who came out to replace Brett Favre after they retired his ass and then Brett Favre went to another team? I forget where the fuck he went and shit, trying to do better and shit. Mm. And they got this old dude. That was kind of old, but he was younger than Favre. And they said, man, this guy's going to be whatever. Yeah, right. This guy took them to like two, three Super Bowls and shit. All of a sudden, like, they gave this motherfucker a chance and he was an overnight star. Aaron Rodgers. Well, apparently, he's making a complete and utter fucking fool of himself. Much like what that guy Lupe Fiasco did when he started talking about the flat earth. This dumb son of a bitch is now claiming that Fauci and the government made AIDS. Ah, uh, you don't even have to go on. I'm just going to show you the video and you can fucking see uh, this dumbass uh, just being an idiot. Here we go. The, the blueprint, the game plan was made in the 80s. Create a pandemic, you know, with a virus that's going wild. Right. Uh, only you know, he was given Fauci was given like over three hundred and fifty million dollars to research this, to come up with drugs new or repurposed to handle the AIDS pandemic. And all they came up with AZ was AZT. And if you do any even a smidge of research, and I know I'm not a you know epidemiologist, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an immunologist, whatever the fuck I can read, though. Right. 
and 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 I can learn and look things up just like any normal person. You know, I can do my own research, which was so vilified, you know, yeah. to even question authority. But that was the game plan back then. Create an environment where only one thing works. Back then, AZT. Now, remdesivir, remdesivir until we get a vaccine. Which, by the way, Anthony Fauci had stake in the Moderna vaccine. And we know Pfizer is one of the most criminally corrupt organizations ever. The fine they paid was the biggest in the history of the DOJ in 2009. Like, what are we talking about? We're going to put our full trust in science that can't be questioned. All right. So, though there are some things that he makes good points about, I will point out where his faults are, where he talks about that he read and shit. You really think this motherfucker goes and reads fucking medical and then and, and government fucking issues and shit? This dumb son of a bitch can look at paper and look at little dots and lines and shit and then little, listen right here, throw it to the guy number four, throw it to number four. Yes, sir. And he throws it. The fuck he's going to be reading and shit and learning about this ass. You're trying to tell me that Fauci, they get Fauci money to do the AIDS epidemic and all this shit. Fuck you, you dumbass. This guy is like literally the brand new fucking Alex Jones. The fucking dumb son of a bitch talking about a fucking the conspiracies about frogs and shit. Fuck you. Aaron Rodgers, shut the fuck up. If you're not playing football, shut the fuck up. Sit your ass down, stay at home, spend your millions of dollars and fuck your fucking hot as fuck model girlfriends. Nobody gives a fuck about you talking about science and shit, you idiot. Who the fuck is going to take this guy seriously? Talking about like, oh, I'm no epidemiologist. I didn't graduate from college. Well, neither did I, but you don't see me spreading lies on the internet, you fucking dumbass. Stick to the things you know. I know how to throw a football. Well, tell people how to throw a football, you idiot. Fucking dumbass. And hey, you look better with a beard and a mustache. You look all clean cut, pretty boy. You dumbass. All right. I'm done with his asshole. Cheers. <laughs> I, just wanted to, I just wanted to trash that son of a bitch. <laughs> oh. All right, all right. <laughs> well, you guys are going to love this next one, all right? But none other than El Chapo, Joaquin, Loera, Guzman has come out and said that the American penitentiary system has been mistreating him. <laughs> and if y'all don't know, here we got two of the baddest woke uh, pack motherfuckers live taking this fucking drug billionaire uh, fucking uh, uh, chapo cartel to jail <laughs> but anyways this motherfucker now is complaining he says hey the united states jail they haven't let me use my phone to talk to my contacts, uh, I mean daughters, to my daughters, uh, and about family matters, because it's their birthday and Christmas and shit, and I need to tell them about, you know, shit. No one's letting me use the phone. My daughters and shit, I need to talk to them. <laughs> Why, why are they not letting me watch television? I, I asked for fucking a couch and shit. They don't, they, I'm sleeping in a bunk pit with this black man. What's going on? What kind of jail is this? He's asking. <laughs> He's never been in a jail like this, fellas. In Mexico, he lived, he lived like a king in jail. <laughs> uh, I asked for lobster last week. They don't let him down. <laughs> <laughs> they gave me South Mary steak like everyone else. <laughs> What's going on? This is not fair. <laughs> you dumb son of a bitch. You're lucky you're not dead. You idiot. <laughs> you're still alive in jail. 
They're taking care of you, you idiot. <laughs> Look at Cobra Kyle and Super Saiyan Joker there. They'll fucking end your life in American jail. Don't fuck around over here, motherfucker. <laughs> Woke back for life, bitches. Oh, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Dumb son of a bitch. They don't let me use the phone to talk to my daughters. Good, your daughters don't even want to talk to you. They're out fucking all of the guys that you hired to take care of them. <laughs> That's the truth, you dumb fucking idiot. Dumb son of a bitch. Probably illiterate as fuck and shit. Got more money than I'll ever will. Five billion dollars worth. Son of a bitch. Look at him in jail. Shit. Shh. Taking a shit in front of his cellmate. <laughs> No privacy. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you go, Kyle, and fucking nobody will fuck with you guys. I'll, I'll, I'll show it again. Nobody's gonna fuck with Comer or Joker right there, motherfucker. That's a woke pack. Hey, that's me. Like, son of man. <laughs> son of man. You guys are going to be my bodyguards and shit. Nobody. Somebody comes up for an autograph. Gonna be, Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that's badass and shit. Y'all mean motherfuckers. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's, let's move on. Let's move on from the celebrity ass. Uh, uh, because we got more ass. Literal ass. Because Tori Spelling has announced... <coughs> that she is now getting divorced from her husband where she had five children five blonde kids with underage fellas don't get any ideas I know that that one on the far left looks old enough but uh, she's not all right they're kids all right all these are kids they're her kids that's the ex-husband and she's getting divorced but she is now getting divorced, and she wants to come out and announce it to the world that she did officially have five C-sections for each and every one of these blonde Aryan little children. And uh, her, according to her, these are words coming out of her mouth, not me. Her vagina is the equivalent of a 14-year-old's. So... Come on down, is what she's saying. Uh, it sounds like she's openly uh, issuing this out to the fucking Biden administration and the way she worded it and shit. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice that your vagina is tight, but your boobs are still saggy and shit. And your face is plastic. Trying to look like Gwen Stefani and shit. <laughs> I don't know. I think like most of y'all probably just gonna wait till the daughter is fucking of age and shit. <laughs> that is it to hit this fucking ghoul over here <laughs> who's announcing what her vagina's like <laughs> on Instagram and shit. <laughs> oh my god, what has Hollywood become? Uh, cheers to Tori Spelling and her 14 year old vagina, apparently. Oh well, Jaleel, 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 Steve Urkel, Mr. White, whatever his name is, White, Steve Urkel. God damn, this guy, this guy didn't age well. I mean, look at him. He went from fucking ha like having this cute little innocent face to looking like. Some fucking guy who's gonna sell you drugs at the corner of the Circle K and shit. God damn it. Anyways, he says he, that he doesn't agree with some of the stuff that was said on the child, quiet on the set, children molestation from Nickelodeon, and that, that that at least he's happy that he and ABC Disney was in an environment where he felt safe and was protected. Mostly because his mom was on set and wasn't going to let anybody molest him. Like some of these white parents. Somebody comes and says, hey, let me borrow your kid for the month. 
You go stay at home. He can stay at my place. I'll teach him how to act. Make him a millionaire and a star. Don't worry. He's going to be okay. His black mom said, The fuck you're going to take him for a month? We're going to stay at the Motel 6 every night. And I'm bringing him to the set. And I'm sitting right there. Ain't nobody touching my kid. You son of a bitch. Yeah, this is a big difference in Nickelodeon stars and this motherfucker. Okay, not only that, but the whole the whole cast was black. No, 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 no molestations going on with that kind of shit. All right, no, none of that shit. If anybody would have seen anybody touching a little kid, that motherfucker would have been beaten to death on the spot because that's the way we we roll down here, motherfuckers. And that's the way they rolled in the Family Matters set. They don't fuck around over there. Nickelodeon, letting shit, letting shit fly. We don't let shit fly over here in the hood. All right, this little boy, look at him. He looks tough as fuck. Show me a picture of Drake Bell or that other kid, uh, Underwood, Matthew Underwood. Those motherfuckers look like a bunch of pussies because they got fingers in the asses. This guy didn't get no finger in the ass. Look at him. He looks scary as fuck. You don't want to fuck with Urkel grown up. The fuck you do, motherfucker. Cheers to Steve Urkel grown up. Again, standing up against molestations. And his mother being a good mom. Not being a greedy bitch. Giving away children for, for crack money and shit. Cheers. But we're not done talking about these children and their unfortunate childhoods. Good no no and that hottie Christy Carlson Romano herself, Ren Stevens. If you don't remember her, she used to come out as Ren Stevens, uh, even Stevens, big sister, even Stevens. That was fucking uh Shia LaBeouf. From that show, she's even Steven. She was the older sister. She was always hot as fuck. I had the biggest crush on her growing up. When I watched that show, I was like, I want to be that. I, I was Shia Buff's age, but I wanted to fuck his sister, his older sister. Fuck yeah. And as she grew up, she got even hotter and sexier. But unfortunately, just like everyone else, she experienced the sexual molestations and the finger in the asses from the Nickelodeon producers and shit. She's talked about it in several times in the fucking podcast that she does for clicks and, and, and money on YouTube. Just like I'm trying to do, but we have 560 subscribers and somehow only 34 watched us last week. So I don't understand how the fuck am I ever going to make any money here. Uh, but yeah, she makes some money. Maybe I need some tits. She's got some really nice ones. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. But she's coming out and saying she doesn't support this quiet on the set bullshit. Because she says that these people that made that show, that they didn't make this show because they care about the people that got molested or got a finger in the ass. She said these motherfuckers, the only thing they care about is getting clicks and making money and on, on, this, on this shit. And the people that signed up for the show, yeah, they got molested, but they did it for the money because they want money and shit. She goes, I haven't earned nothing from my sexual molestations and my finger in the ass. She says, one time, I told my mom they wanted to film a scene where the scene's going to start and it's going to be a zoom in of your ass and we're going to zoom out all the way and then we're going to see the whole picture of the scene. And she was all like, let me go talk to my mom. And the mom went right over there and said, the fuck you're going to start the scene with my daughter's ass zooming out? The fuck you are, you perverts? And you're telling her not to wear any underwear on the skirt and shit? Fuck you. So she she says, I've already done that. All right, I got the finger in the ass and shit. And I've exposed this shit. And I've talked about it. I'm not going to repeat it. I'm going to be another guy over here for money and clicks. And she goes, those motherfuckers, they're just doing it for money and clicks. This is some serious business and serious shit that happened to all of us as children and shit. Uh, and, and, and we're tired of it. But it's okay because she's sexy as fuck and, and god damn it, she just got better with age. Christy Romano, Ren Stevens, 
As soon as you get divorced from that fucking rich as fuck husband, you feel like living a shitty life from a guy who can't provide and just does drugs and drinks all night. Give me a call, bitch. Oh, yeah. Cheers! <laughs> all right, all right. We're getting too carried away here. We're talking crazy and shit. Calm down, everybody. Let's calm down. We're just about finished uh, with the weekly pop culture breakdown. And of course, we cannot finish without going over the Yeezy! <laughs> and my Yeezy was out and about with his wife half his age, big titties, no underwear, see through everything with his Fucking Jaws, 007 gold Jaws, badass. Look at her nipples, bro. They're sticking out of her fucking top there. Look, that guy's like, can I hug you? Yeah, baby, come hug me. People taking pictures. This is a life everybody wishes they could live. I know I do. Uh, fuck yeah. Uh, unfortunately, there was an incident that happened to the Yeze and his uh, wife. They went to the hotel after this because he ain't wearing any fucking underwear and shit. Uh, fuck, man. <laughs> you know, really, she's not wearing any underwear, bros. <laughs> I just lost my concentration. <laughs> damn. Uh, damn it. I just want to be Yeezy's best friend so I can hang out and just stare at his wife all day long. She probably walks in the nude at home. Hey, Yeezy, let's just go to your house and hang out, bro. Fuck the public. <laughs> That's what I would say. But anyways, <laughs> um, there was an incident that happened because they were at their hotel that night after fucking parading around all day in the nude. Um, they went to their hotel and a fan went up to them. There's no video of this, which I don't have. Because if there was, I would be showing it. There's no video of this. But a fan went up just like this. A fan went up to them and said, can I hug you? And... The guy hugged Bianca and sorry, but according to the police reports and the allegations is that the guy grabbed his hand to hug her and stuck his hand in her pants and grabbed her ass like bare ass and pussy like that. Like he went like this and like that and shit. He, 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 he fucking wet his fingers and he went like that and the Yeezy got mad. And there was an altercation, and I don't know if this is true. The, somebody might have gotten knocked out in a concussion. The Yeezy, the bodyguard, saw something happened. But now, the Yeezy is involved in an assault and battery ca case uh, in L.A., I think, or wherever the fuck they were. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's get, it's actually serious, y'all, because somebody somebody got hurt, somebody got accused. Uh, but the Yeezy and his team are saying that, hey, this guy was sexually molesting Bianca Sensori in public. He went up to her and started, f like, he just straight up went into her underwear, which she wasn't even wearing at the time. I mean, when you hug a chick who's pretty much naked and then she says you're sexually molesting her, I mean, how do you defend yourself? You're already naked, bitch. I mean, <laughs> So I don't know who's telling the truth here. The guy says he just hugged her, but she says, like, no, he grabbed my pussy. Well, I mean, if I just hugged you, I put oh, grabbed your pussy too. <laughs> it's right there, you know, for everyone to see. Uh so I I don't know, y'all. <laughs> it's a tough one. I wish there was video because usually we can we can decipher and and and, and get to the bottom of this. But even my Yeezy, I love you, Yeze, but if a guy hugs her like that, and then you say he uh, sexually assaulted her, but I mean, just hugging her, yeah, I mean, the guy hugging her right there, sexually assaulting her. Fuck. The bodyguard who, who went this way, miss, that guy, <laughs> that guy sexually assaulting her when you think about it. I mean, fuck, you know. It's a tough one when you're going to, you know, step into the court of law on this one. That's about all we know as far as this incident. But don't worry, y'all. 
there is going to be more incidents involved, more, more, more speculations. This is going to, this is not over when it comes to this. And we're probably going to get back to this eventually. But they didn't end here because they're all like, hey, we're going to move on. The lawyers will take care of this. They'll call us when we got to show up to court. We're moving on. And the yays, they took her along without the kids to Disneyland. Now in Disneyland, they are a little bit more reserved and they do have a dress code. Can't walk around fucking naked. So, <laughs> so she wore the same shit she wears with no underwear and no bra on. But in the front of this thing, she wore some kind of plastic apron. So you couldn't see her nipples and her pussy lips. <laughs> and you can't see her asshole anyways because, you know, this thing is so tight <laughs> and her ass is swallowing it. So it's okay in the back. She doesn't need to cover her ass. But she needed to wear a rubber apron at Disney World so that she wouldn't be naked. Um. So yeah, they were there. But here's the crazy part that confuses the shit out of me. Is that she was fucking barefoot. She was fucking barefoot. So, Disneyland has a dress code where they allow, I guess, half nudity. And now they allow people being barefooted. Oh, she's wearing the new Yeezy bandages. Nah, she's barefooted. If I walked around with my bare feet, with my fucking, my nails that, that, that have that fucking, uh, that fucking, uh, a fungus, you know, the thick yellow nails, all like that, and I haven't cut them, they're sticking out and shit, and it smells, and you see all these scabs and shit, and I walk around like that in Disney World, they're gonna allow me? You're allowing this? Oh. I love my Yeezy, but sometimes he does some stuff that takes it too far where I'm like, this is some bullshit. Anyways, we still love my Yeezy. I love my Yeezy here in this channel, and I still represent him. And I want to say cheers to the Yeezy. All right, let's get this show on the road, and we're going to start with the comic book nerd shit. And uh, we're going to start off with the very first look at Tron Part 3 that is being called Tron Ares. And we got our first look at Jared Leto, who is Ares, looking dumb as fuck. It's a kind of fucking thick-ass rubber Power Ranger suit. His lights are not even red like in the picture we saw. He looks fucking, I don't know. Hey, this movie, just the concept is fucking dumb. We're no longer in the fucking virtual world. And the AI is coming into the real world. And what? Oh, I'm digital. You can't hurt me. I can walk through walls and be Neo in the Matrix. Fuck you, Disney. What kind of movie is this going to be? This is fucking dumb as fuck. And Jared Leto there, his 72-year-old ass, trying to look cool as fuck, saying, Look at me. I'm not as old as Harrison Ford. I can still be in badass sci-fi action movies and shit. I'm not trying to look like Kurt Cobain slash Jesus on purpose. I am not at all. I guess. I don't know, the whole concept of them leaving the virtual world is really what pisses me off. And I don't like it. That's the truth. I don't know if this is going to be good. I really enjoyed the one before this, which was Tron Legacy, I think. 
Um, I really enjoyed it. I saw it in 3D. It was badass. The visuals were good. This just looks, uh, well, I don't even know what to say. There's nothing good here that I see, but it's just half a scene. He looks like he's beat up. Maybe there's policemen shooting at him. I don't know. We'll find out when we see a trailer. I can't judge this ass too much. That's all I'm going to say. Anyways, I'm moving on from this bullshit. Because we got some more comic book nerd ass to talk about. And then now being announced that the brand new Jurassic Park movie will be called Jurassic City. And the rumored stars are none other than Scarlett Yost Hansen as the lead female. Oh yeah! Talk about sexiness as fuck. And Jonathan Bailey, some guy with big ears and nobody knows and shit tries to work out so he can be buff and shit, but he's not that big like Chris Hansworth or Dave Bautista or, so, or John Cena, some big motherfucking action star. Not even Star-Lord. Star-Lord is fucking bigger than this guy, but whatever. Chris Pratt. Now they got this guy, skinny guy, trying to be cool and shit. He's going to be the lead in Jurassic City. And the current rumor is that none other than Marvel's top choice to replace Kang the Woman Beaters, Coleman Domingo, will be the villain. You know, he's woke as fuck, currently married to another man. So he's perfect for every Hollywood film right now. Jurassic City. Interesting. It sounds to me that I think, I believe, I know where they're taking this franchise. Obviously, the dinosaurs now roam the Earth along with the humans. The humans trying to figure out how to fuck keep the dinosaurs at bay. Oh my god, we don't know what to do. So I'm guessing later on in the future, they decide to coexist. And there is a city... Where the dinosaurs live in the city with the humans. And that's what the movie's about. Some utopian city where dinosaurs and, and humans live and coexist side by side. Instead of taking taxi cabs, you get on the brontosaurus and you go to work and shit. Kind of like the Flintstones. That's the fucking movie we're going to see. It's the modern day Flintstones of Jurassic City. That's what it's going to be called. Coleman Domingo is going to be the guy who's, I don't know, the gangster. He's going to rise the velociraptors with guns and shit. Sounds cool. It sounds cool. I like it. I like where they're going with this. It's a brand new concept. It's a brand new idea. I don't know. I don't know. I've always enjoyed Jurassic Park movies. Not because they're smart or because the plots makes any sense. Or, or, you know, they don't even show any nudity. They really don't. It's a damn shame. Dinosaurs and nudity. I mean, it sounds like it could go hand in hand. But they don't even show that. There hasn't ever been a sex scene in the Jurassic Park movie, which also bothers me. Uh, but anyways, I've always enjoyed them. Because they have dinosaurs. Not only that, but every new movie they show us new dinosaurs they never showed in the movie before. And that makes it even more exciting. You know, in this last movie, they showed a velociraptor with feathers and it swam in the water. Now, I know scientifically none of that makes sense. But on screen, it looked fucking sick as fuck. And I enjoyed spending my money on shit like that. It was pretty good. I just try to say. They had this dinosaur, Diphosaurus, or some ass like that. He has like a fan on his back and shit. I remember that from Ark Survival Evolved. I remember I caught one and shit. So I was all excited when I saw it in the movie, Jurassic World. Or City, or whatever the what last one was called. Like Extinction. I don't know. The point is... Yeah, this movie's not gonna make any sense. But it's gonna have hot as fuck... Uh, Scarlett Yost in it. And this woke as fuck. Fucking, this guy's good actor, Coleman Domingo. I don't know about the skinny guy. I mean, he looks like he came out in, like, in the Frodo Baggins or something like that. You know, I don't, I don't give a fuck about that guy. 
But the other two actors are definitely... I mean, I'd go see this movie for dinosaurs and, and a gay black man and this hot as fuck lady. Hell yeah. That's all I'm going to say. So cheers to Jurassic City! <laughs> all right, all right. It was actually announced this week, fellas. That's Sonic the Hedgehog. They had shown the trailer to a bunch of people at CinemaCon. Unfortunately, the trailer didn't show Shadow the Hedgehog talking at all. Well, it turns out that was because they hadn't casted the voice. And now it's been revealed that Keanu Reeves will voice Shadow the Hedgehog. And they couldn't have chosen a better fucking guy to do the voice. This is perfect. This character already rides a motorcycle and shit. Saw the shadow. And it's going to be perfect for Keanu Reeves. And in fact, I think even in the Sonic movie, the first one, he's all excited because he loves Keanu Reeves. And he's always he, on the TV. He's watching Speed and shit like that. Uh, so it's perfect. You know. I didn't like Idris Elba as Knuckles. But he grew on me in the movie. It grew on me. And now there's going to be a TV show that's coming out next week. And I'm probably going to review it and shit. Um, but. Yeah. This is a good fit. Keanu. S fucking Shadow the Hedgehog. That's perfect. Perfect casting. Perfect everything. I've always been... I've, I've been totally happy with these Sonic movies. These Sonic movies are not like the best movies in the world. But they got a lot of Easter eggs. They got a lot of Easter eggs. And they got a lot of... uh, You know, they got adult jokes in them. They really do. You gotta catch on to them. And the guy who plays Sonic is perfect. Uh, the voice. The, he came out in... Uh, what was it? Parks and Rex. He was uh, Ralph... Uh, damn it. I always forget his name. Uh, I always forget his name, man. But anyways, he played that weird guy. Ralphio. Ralphio. Uh, John Ralphio. That was his name. John Ralphio. And his sister was crazy when they were both on there. It was perfect and shit. Uh, so I think he's perfect as Sonic. Uh, I'm going to review the Knuckles show that's coming out next week. When it comes out, I'll binge watch it. Maybe not that Friday, but the following week. Just like Fallout, I had to wait a whole week because I didn't binge watch it till like Monday or Tuesday. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Them motherfuckers want to release eight episodes on Thursday. Fuck you. The podcast is on Friday. I don't have enough time. I work on Thursdays. You shits. And on Friday. You dicks. Anyways. Nowadays, I want to make Monday. So I never have a day off. You don't know what it's like. In Joe Biden's America. You dicks. Anyways. Keanu Reeves, Shadow the Hedgehog. I'm happy for it. Cheers to that. <laughs> Uh, but I want to get into it because it came out not this week, but the week before it came out on Thursday. And I think I watched one episode before the podcast and I got super excited to tell you guys about it. But unfortunately, I want to review it all. So I think I finished it by Monday or Tuesday. I finished it all eight episodes. But here it is. The fallout. Review on Amazon Prime, I think. Don't quote me on that. Fucking high as fuck. I'm going to show you some cool stuff. I know nothing about Fallout. I've never played the games. The only thing I know about is my uh, Palestinian roommate when I lived in this other town, the ATX. Uh, my Palestinian roommate... Who used to tell me stories about his grandfather who got kicked out by these Nazi Palestinian haters from the state that is supported by the United States. I don't understand why. 
I'm not going to say the name because I don't want to get canceled, but you know who I'm talking about. His grandfather was kicked out of his house and shit and forced into the desert with men with guns. Because they said, ah, oh, this is our land now. They got oppressed and shit. And then the mother and their dad, they had to be shipped over here to America. And that's where he was born. And this legacy lives on. But he was telling me the story. And he used to play his fucking game. And I hated this game because all I would see is him running around the desert. And there's giant cockroaches. And I said, I don't want to watch this shit. I hate cockroaches. I'm going to go to sleep dreaming of this ass. So I know nothing about this show. And I got to tell you, this is one of the best goddamn shows I've seen in a long time. I'm, I'm, I'm having a Game of Thrones drought withdrawals because I haven't seen anything good on television. I know One Piece was good, but One Piece come, doesn't even hold a candle next to this. This is, wow. I don't know if this is faithful to the video game. I don't know if this ties in to the fucking video game. And frankly, I don't give a shit if it is anything like the video game. All I know is that the eight episodes that I saw had me glued in. It had the exact amount of mystery, of violence, of comedic elements to it it wasn't just too much of everything it was just the right amount of everything in every fucking episode ah this is uh, in a nutshell i won't spoil it too much because i want you guys to see this i really do but in a nutshell this is i guess an alternate reality from what i understand where the Cold War took a different path. And the future in modern days doesn't look like the way it looks in our time. The future in modern days looks like the way people in the 40s thought. Like the buildings looked all like Jetsons and stuff like that. Like there's not flying cars, but stuff looked like that. You know, like, you know, like that. And there's these corporations that are being assholes. Because of the Cold War, and they're selling vaults for people to live underground. But the corporations are all like, well, if the Cold War doesn't happen, people are not going to buy the vaults. If the war doesn't happen, and we're going to lose money because we sold all these vaults, and then nothing happened. So the corporation says, well, we'll drop the bombs to make sure it happens, and we'll all make money. 200 years later after that, this is what happens. This is a fucking crazy shit. This little girl, uh, some raiders break into their vault. She's living underground. 200 years later, her and her dad who runs the vault, all this. It's a crazy shit, all right? But basically, some guys from the, from the mutated, crazy, apocalyptic world break into their place and they steal her dad. And she leaves the vault to go in search of her dad into this crazy, toxic wasteland with mutations and crazy people. Not knowing, being totally ignorant of the dangers that awaits her. And uh, that's where the best, this little girl, uh, her name, and oh man, I feel so bad for her. Ella Prunell. Purnell. She's a British little girl. I didn't know. Of course she's British. All the best actors in America are British. I didn't know she was British until I saw her in the interview. I freaked the fuck out. This little girl is fucking amazing. She plays her character to the T. She reminds me a lot of Emma Stone. Emma Stone's acting. Uh, the way she talks and shit like that. But she's perfect in where she plays it innocent and ignorant enough. That it's comedic but not too bad. Because like it's almost like if you're seeing a Mormon. Because they know that something's bad and evil. But they're still trying to look at the good side of things. And that's the way this little girl is. It's so badass. Walton Goggins is the ghoul. Which is, I think is one of Hollywood's most underrated actors. I remember I saw him for the first time in The Shield. 
Uh, and he came out in the Marvel movies. They wasted that guy, some generic movie in the Ant Man and the Wasp movie, some fucking generic fucking uh, villain that had nothing to do with anything. It's fucking so sad. That guy's such a good actor, and he plays the ghoul in this one. He's a guy who has no nose, and it's like a mutant that I'm showing right now, doing all these cool stuff. He is such a badass fucking actor. Um, uh, totally underrated in Hollywood. He should be making, like, fucking uh, Academy Award winning movies. This guy's really, really fucking good. I remember, like I said, the first time I ever saw him was in The Shield with Anthony Mackie. Not Anthony Mackie, Michael Chiklis. I'm sorry, with Michael Chiklis, the fucking the thing. Uh, he was like one of the, the 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 cops. He was so good in it. Aaron Clifton Moulton plays Maximus, which is this guy who joins the Brotherhood of uh, I forget what they're called, the Brotherhood of Steel or some ass like that. There's these big metal things. They're kind of like the police force that are trying to bring fucking order to the wastelands and shit from you know uh, above. Basically, just the what's left of the military. They form their own little their own little gang, and they're trying to bring peace and order. But they're also everyone is fucked in this show because everyone wants peace for the world. They they say it several times, and it makes a lot of sense. Everyone wants peace for the world, but everyone has their own idea of how to bring peace, and that's why there's always conflict. And there's never going to be peace as long as everyone has a different opinion. Which is what we have right now. Uh, and so even in a post-apocalyptic world, there is no peace. Because everyone does not agree on how to make peace. And how to fix the world. Um, it's such a good fucking show. And there's a big twist and mystery. And at the very end, they reveal it. And it stays to be continued. Which a lot of the nerds say is going to lead into Fallout New Vegas. I don't know none of these games, so I don't know. I saw some of those videos where the, the YouTube video... I, I went and watched the YouTube videos where the nerds explain it because I wanted to be one of these guys that tells you all these facts and knowledge. I don't know what the fuck none of those pussies were talking about. All this 2077, 2098, 2070. Fuck you! I mean, you have to be a real nerd to understand the lore of this. But I can tell you, if you watch just this show... It'll, it, the show tells you enough that you, you're you going to know you're this is badass. That's what I'm going to say. It's gory. There's action. There's gore. Um, There's no... I mean, they don't show... Yes, you know what I was about to say. They don't show any nudity. But yes, they do. <laughs> they show titties and ass and shit. This is badass. This show has it all. It has everything. That a show needs to have nowadays. And it grabs your attention. And the acting is amazing. There's a lot of actors in here. Kyle McClanning is in this. He plays her dad. This is a guy. Uh, you've seen him in so many fucking movies. Michael Emerson. Also, I've seen him in tons of fucking movies. He plays the doctor. And uh, spoiler alert, he's not there. This, this show, to me... Reminded me of Game of Thrones in the sense that I couldn't get attached to characters because fuckers die. Motherfuckers keep dying and I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Um, There is this woke as fuck character played by this woke as fuck little girl who probably doesn't like to be called a little girl and identifies as a little boy. Zelia Mendes Jones is one of the most beautiful <laughs> little boy girls I've ever seen. Her eyes, I was just like, man, I know she's trying to be a boy, but I can still see a pretty little girl in there. <laughs> Everyone's good in this, bro. Everyone's good. There's this Indian lady that's in this, too. That's the bad that you think is the bad guy throughout, and then it's like, well, I mean, it's just crazy, bro, because it really makes you think about what is good and what is evil, and the perspectives are different and shit. Um, this is a good fucking show. If you know nothing about Fallout, you're gonna love this, cause I know nothing about Fallout, and I love this. 
There's a lot of videos on the internet that are hating and they hate that. Uh, they're saying all this shit that they ruined it. All these nerds. Obviously, they've been playing this on their computers, on their PCs, and they're fucking masturbating to this shit since they were fucking, I don't know, fucking in the 80s and shit, whenever the fuck the first one came out, 95 or whatever the fuck. Uh, I haven't. All right. But as far as what a TV show should be like, and and catch your attention not only that but keep you entertained it's not s silly all the time that it's annoying like a fucking uh taika watiti movie it's not it's got comedy in there but it's just, it's just sprinkled on there in the necessary points where it needs to be there should be a joke here there's a joke here nothing like a taika watiti movie there's gore there's action there's mystery and it's just so, this world is so alive. It's real. I, I want to know more. I want to see more. I am probably more than confident in my heart that I think this is probably going to be renewed. It should be renewed for a second season. It has to be. It's good. It's good, bros. It's good. It's not a CGI fuck fest either. There's some CGI shit in there, but it's not too much. Uh, and it doesn't look fake at all. This really does look cinematic quality. Those helicopters are not real. And I was like, they look fucking real. <laughs> you know? So, a lot of good shit. You don't have to play the games to understand or enjoy this. Because I understand it. I think when I went back to YouTube and I started watching some of those lore videos, that I really got lost. Because those nerds get really into it. And they talk about shit that it's like... The show is simplified, and it just gives you the jits of it. And that's all you need. Plain and simple. Good actors, good story, good show. I hope you guys go and watch it. In your own time, go watch it. I don't think you'll be uh, disappointed at all. At all. I wasn't. So cheers to this show. Fallout, a good watch. But moving on to the real ass of the night. And we have none other than a casting call for Superman in Georgia. And they want punk rock males. All right. They want to pay $154 for 12 hours. Uh, that's fucking shit. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, they want talent who can portray anyone between the ages of 18 and 25. 18 years of age of older. All ethnicities. Doesn't say genders. They gotta be male. And they have to be able to portray a punk rocker in a punk rock band. Specifically looking for those with piercings. And if you have a mohawk, even better. My question is, do any of these punk rock males, can they have uh, gray braids and makeup? Because if they can, I think I could go and earn $154 for weed. On Wednesday, April the 24th, at Lafayette, Georgia. What do you guys think? Could I come out in a Superman movie being a punk rocker in a band? Superman? Superman goes really fast in the sky. He wears reds and underwear. Superman? I don't care. Oh, yeah. Here comes Superman. Yeah, 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 guys. That could be me on the movie for DZ and James Gunn. I'd be the selfie. James Gunn takes a selfie with me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope I can pass between 18 and 25. What do you guys think? I should put on a little bit more makeup, right? To get rid of some of these wrinkles. I'll go get a Botox shot like this. I'm 25. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I can pull it off. <laughs> Cheers, y'all motherfuckers. All right, all right, all right. 
Let me keep going. So we are talking about Superman. Yes. James Gunn uh, is a social media addict. It's a beautiful, very good looking, attractive, young, half his age wife at home. Instead of having this disgusting old man hands all over her, he's tweeting out spoilers. He posted, say my name, with a picture of Mr. Miss Pick or whatever the fuck this ass is called. Some kind of interdimensional being that they made up in the 30s and 40s and shit that shows up and plays tricks and games like he makes everything upside down or everything fucking tastes like ass or just he just fucks around until you're able to say his name backwards and then he disappears and leaves forever. Ah, and apparently he's going to bring it into the fucking Superman movie. Because why else would he be teasing this ass? You know, I remember this from the 90s or early 2000s fucking Superman movie or cartoons. And they had Gilbert Gottfried doing the voice for this piece of shit. And I hated every episode this character came on because all of a sudden a show that kicked ass like Superman who had been fighting Brainiac and Lobo and fucking uh, uh, Metamorpho. All of a sudden there's Gilbert Goffrey being a troll for 30 minutes and just doing nonsense like Looney Tunes and it would always piss me off but because there did nothing else on TV I wasn't gonna watch the fucking My Little Pony or some fucking Powder Puff Girls so I had to watch this stupid episode and I remember I fucking hated it and James Gunn is going to bring this into his DC live action universe some fucking annoying fucking Shit that no one even knows how to say his name. Mr. Mix Plick or Mr. Kill Splick Mix or whatever the fuck. Fuck you, James Gunn. This is why the DC Universe is going to fail. Because you keep bringing obscurity that the average person will not only fucking just completely just erase from their memory. Or they'll be just completely confused. And, what the fuck is this? The idiot. His fucking DCU is on the way to failure. And it hasn't even come out. And he's showing you all the signs right here. And there's more signs. Because his workers have gotten on the bandwagon. And have said, oh, if the director's fucking uh, is teasing, then let me go ahead and tease some shit myself. And all the visual effects artists, they tease pulling on a stretch Armstrong a fucking figure. And they said, oh, here we go. Ah. So now on top of having Metamorpho, Hawk Girl, Lex Luthor, Louis Lane, Jimmy Olsen, fucking, uh, uh, the bad Superman Ultraman, uh, fucking, uh, green, the gay Green Lantern, Mr. Miss Pig, or Kex Plagman, whatever the fuck you want to call that Gilbert Godfrey ass. We're now also gonna have Plastic Man. And I forgot to mention the authority and the bad guys, the other the other fucking characters. Plastic Man. This is a Superman movie that already has like over 50 characters with no origin stories, no explanations, no how they got their powers, where the fuck they're from, why are they even there? Superman! James Gunn. Fucking Plastic Man. Look, I like Plastic Man. I like him. But fuck you, James Gunn. It's gonna be another fucking two-minute ass that he's gonna show up. Every oh! oh! He's dead. That's it. 
get, get excited for 30 seconds and that's it? Fuck you! Look at these assholes smiling. We're teasing some shit that that's gonna lead nowhere because it's gonna fail. Fucking bullshit. Uh, there is one thing that I will command and acknowledge. And actually, I've been saying this from the beginning, so fuck you. He who should not be named, you piece of shit. Because this motherfucker used to talk shit about this all the time. But David Corswet was seen uh, during one of his breaks, uh, just walking around. And he was buff and ripped as fuck. That's right. To all you naysayers and pussies who quit the channel. Who were talking about this guy's too skinny. He's not as big as Henry Cavill. Ah, oh, he's a wimp. He's never gonna fit into the Superman trunks. Look at the size of his legs. They're the size of his arms. It's the size of his chest. This guy's huge as fuck. Sons of bitches. That's a Superman if there ever was. You pussies. That's all I'm gonna say. Cheers. David Cornsway and your hot as fuck. Pale as fuck. Seamus looking body. He looks in better shape than Seamus because Seamus came back as fat as fuck for WWE. I'm really disappointed in that shit. Cheers, Court Sweat. Not Seamus. Ah, but we're not done, unfortunately. Talking about the James Gunn ass. Because he has cast. Martha Kent, and it's none other than Neva Howell, which looks like he's going for a much older iteration of the Kents. Yeah, we've never seen a Martha Kent this old. Uh, they've always been a little younger and shit, so it's a different take. You know, it's a different take. Not bad. I think it'll be okay. But there is some alarming news. Because he did cast this lady as Martha Kent. But the news also came out about who he cast it. As Jonathan Kent. And it's none other than this disgusting, disturbing, mental patient. Fucking looking... Like, uh, like, like he came from Romulak and shit. This fucking Wilson Fisk looking motherfucker, Pruitt Taylor Vince, has been cast as Jonathan Kent, Papa, Papa Kent. I don't even know what James Gunn is thinking, y'all. I really don't. This is a good actor. But now you're you're choosing this fucking Wilson Fisk looking motherfucker who's played demented psychopaths in all of the past movies. Yeah, fine. Maybe I'm judging it due to this, or he's fucking being crazy and alcoholic and shit. I'm judging it too much. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, but the past movies have shown me this image of ass. How am I supposed to see an image of a, a good, wholesome old man who raised fucking Jesus? Does this look like a man who raised Jesus down here? Fucking shit. Give an exorcism in the fucking... Uh, fucking... What was it? Uh, Constantine and shit. He died and shit. And not only that, he drank himself to death. But what was that other movie? Uh, the one where he was an identity. He was actually a, a guy with a split personality. And at the end, he fucking chokes and kills Alfred Molina and shit. Who was a psychiatrist. Fucking shit. Why? You might as well have gotten, what's his name? Steve Buscemi? To be fucking Jonathan Kent? You're gonna be like all fucking weird and shit. But choose your brother. You already chose your brother to be the handsome bad guy. You might as well choose him to be the fucking old man, you fucking idiot. This guy should have been Wilson Fisk. He's fatter than Wilson D'Onofrio and looks fucking more like Wilson Fisk than that son of a skinny ass 
Fit as fuck, motherfucker. That's it. I'm getting pissed. We're moving on. We're still not done with the DC ass and this fucking Jonathan Martha Kent bullshit. Because James Gunn wants to fucking come out with his ass and come out and say, Hey, season two for, for, for fucking John Cena's Peacemaker is filming right now and I'm filming it. And he went ahead and he put a picture of the back of the helmet and he with his iPhone because he's a social media addict. And he always has to be posting on Twitter and Instagram and all his ass on threads. So he posted this. And you can see if you zoom in that he's taking it with his iPhone 15. And shit, the latest camera and ass. Filming right now. That's all good because I love season one. But after I heard the news that season one is not going to be canon to season two. Even though season two is called season two, season two is really season one of the new DCU, which makes no sense. If you ask me, fucking idiot, just confusing people even more. But it gets even worse because if he's filming season two of Peacemaker right now, then who the fuck is filming Superman? That means this idiot has purposely obligated himself to go back and forth from one city to the other side of the country or the world, wherever they're filming, to film a movie and a TV show. His time back and forth. This is worse than what Kevin Feige does at Marvel with those woke ass fuck fucking transsexual motherfuckers. This idiot. Thinks he's going to be able to build a universe by filming a movie and a TV show at the exact same time? This has failure written all over it. James Gunn doesn't have the capacity to do this. He does it. The fucking dumbass. He has big dreams, big futures, and shit like that. He's got a hot young wife he doesn't even pay attention to. She's going to leave him for someone sexier, hotter, fucks her all the time. Because this dumbass is over here too busy with his DC ass and social media to pay attention to his wife. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'm judging it too much. Maybe I'm being too harsh. Who knows? All I'm saying is that this doesn't sound like it's gonna end up being good. Cheers to James Gunn. Well, let me light a joint here before we move on to the major ass. And by major, I mean the M ass, as in the MCU ass. Marvel slash Disney has fired 15 of their junior employees in production and development across all their platforms and shows. I'm knocking shit over here. Sorry about that. And this is to reducing a lot of their projects and cancellations according to them but it sounds like they were getting rid of all the straight white males in the joint they only wanted black homosexuals non-binaries of ethnicities people wearing makeup and braids and bandanas with them and shit that's what it sounds like Look, I don't really give a fuck, man. I just want to see some goddamn movies on the screen that are worth my money. And if you're firing the motherfuckers that are making the movies that are worth my money, you're fucking up. If you're keeping the idiots that are making me not spend my money, then you're fucking up. I want the people that are making the bad decisions and the bad scripts and the black, b bad castings. I want those sons of bitches fired. The fuck out of that company. 
If I'm going to be spending my money, it better be on quality. Plain and simple. I don't go to McDonald's and buy a Big Mac and get home and open it. And the Big Mac's all, it looks like it was squashed like that and shit by some fucking dumb son of a bitch. My fries are super fucking salty. There's no ketchup. Not one single ketchup or napkin in my fucking bag and shit. And my Coke tastes like water. I don't want to pay for shit like that. I want quality. The same way I want it in my movies and the shit I'm paying for in my streaming services. You dumb pieces of shit. I don't give a fuck who you hire or who you fire. You just better give me the quality that I'm paying for. And right now, the people in charge are not giving us quality. So I hope that these 15 young, woke as fuck generation Zoomers that you fired, I hope they were the ones that were fucking up and not the ones that were being good at their job. You dumb sons of bitches. That's all I'm going to say about this fucking situation here. But Marvel and their firings and shit. Moving on to spoilers. Something came out today. But some fucking Peruvian or some Latin American. I don't know. Somebody from the south of the Mexican border. One of these dumbass countries that don't know any American or don't know anything about freedom like the way we do. They leaked some McDonald's advertisements from the Happy Meals, from the toys, from Captain America, the Brave New World. And they have, uh, and, and this is all in, 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 in uh, Peruvian or whatever. But the Falcon, who's going to be uh, Torres, I forget his name is. Uh, but look, he's, he's, he's got like a green suit, just like in the comic books, and a helmet, and it says Falco. Falco is what they call him over there. Some Black Widow wannabe is going to be called Ruth. I don't know who the fuck that is. Capitao America Volando, Volando, which means the guy, uh, Captain America with wings, Anthony Mackie there with a beard, all fat as fuck, out of shape, not looking half as good as... Fucking Chris Evans did when he was ripped as fuck with his big chest and his six pack and shit. He says, Capito America uh, without the wings. Then we have somebody, some girl, some the woke as fuck character of the movie because there always got to be some kind of lesbian, non binary, purple, green, blue haired motherfucker. This is a per pink haired lady, lesbian, woke as fuck, non binary. Body sexual attraction to another one of the females that acts like a male. Her name is Casva Kel. Casva Cascavel. I don't know what the fuck that is because it's probably in Peruvian, so that's not even the American name. We don't even know what it means in American. God damn it. And then we actually see our first fucking official look. Of Harrison Ford's The Red Hulk, which in whatever language this piece of shit Latin American language is, says Hulk Vermeljo. Fuck you. How is that Red Hulk? Red, R E D, three letters in our language. It's like 17 letters in theirs. Vermeljo. Fuck you, stupid ass piece. That's why you're over there in the third world country, you dumbasses. Then they're also going to sell the shield as a toy and the fucking little plane or whatever. I don't know. Look, all I'm going to say is that until I see this in American, I don't give a fuck about this. And I don't know who these woke ass fuck Ruth and Cascavel girls are. I can already tell you this movie's going to suck ass. And the rumor is behind the scenes, people are upset about this. They are upset about this because they're saying that, hey, this, it, like, it was so bad, they're going to reshoot it this summer. A movie that's already been reshot and shot again is going to be reshot again this summer. More reshoots because Kevin Feige says this, that this is really bad. And, and the, the people they've shown it to have said this is really bad even after the reshoots and the shit they've done. This movie has been shot and rewritten twice already. 
And now we're going to have a third iteration coming this summer. This is a failure already to begin with. When you're reshooting a movie three times, it goes to show you how much faith and how much ass this is going to be. Uh, speaking of ass, the Blade movie has 100% completely been overhauled. It used to be a thing that was set in the past and in the present time. We were going to see flashbacks in the 1300s in uh, fucking whatever New Orleans or some ass like that where Blade is old or young and back in the past. And then we're going to see in the modern day where he was with his daughter training her to be woke as fuck vampire huntress so she can take over from him. And there was going to be Mia Goth who was going to be Lilith the demon taking over and shit. Mahershala Lee almost quit on these motherfuckers. The rumor is he went up to Kim Feige and Marvel and Disney and said, How dare you? I am a Academy, Academy Award winning actor from the Green Book. And you want to make me a second rate fucking fiddle to a little girl. Woke as fuck with purple hair. She's going to be better than me in every scene. Fuck you. I quit. But fucking Kevin Feige and fucking uh, Roberto Iger had to go up in there. No, please, Mahershala, Mahershala, I see. Mahershala Ali, please, sir, please, sir. And he said, no. You call me Mahershala. You call me sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. Yes, master. Yes, master. Master, please come back to do this movie, master. Mahershala Ali finally said, okay, motherfuckers. But I don't want this bullshit rewritten. Because I ain't going to be second fiddle to no little purple haired ass woke as fuck little little girl over here. Being better than me in every scene. So the whole movie has been rewritten. And they're saying the movie is now going to be starting to film this summer. And the movie will be about Blade in the modern day. No history in the past no little girl daughter just blade in the modern times killing vampires leading into midnight suns a completely different movie than what they originally pitched to Mahershala Ali five fucking years ago when they announced this casting and they presented this in front of everybody with the logo. They even brought Mahershala Ali with a cap out. And everybody was cheering. Five years ago. They're finally going to start shooting this summer. A completely different movie than they even wrote the past five years. They just rewrote this three months ago. That's the current state we're at, fellas. For the MCU. But of shit being done on the fly. Monday Night Raw. All over again. We'll see how that goes. It is being said. That the rumor cameo. Of. Natalia Tina. From Game of Thrones. Has been revealed. And that is that she will play. In Deadpool 3. The older version. Of Lauda Kinney. X-23 in Deadpool and Wolverine. So she will play a variant, an older variant of X-23 in Deadpool and Wolverine. Most likely get killed. Maybe she will wear the suit of the Wolverine X-23 from the comic books, which would be badass. But I will say one thing. As far as they chose the perfect actress to play the older version of this little girl because they look really close to each other facial wise they look they she looks like this little girl's going to grow up to be her it looks just like that i would say whoever chose this casting is fucking genius uh, cuz i would have never have thought of this this little girl's grown up. She's like a teenager now. She's kind of butch looking, to be honest with you. I mean, she's kind of sexy because her face is sexy, but she's really butch looking. I don't, I don't know. But to cast this lady to be the older version, grown up, 
Another variant. That's badass. Um, it's crazy how she got killed in Game of Thrones. She was naked <laughs> when she got killed. <laughs> she had just had sex with Bolton. Oh my god, that's the crazy ass fucking shit, man. That's all I'm gonna say. Game of Thrones is fucking nuts. I love it. Uh, I, I, I wanna, I can't wait to Deadpool 3. That is the only Marvel movie this year. Official. Sony's releasing ass. But official Marvel movie. Deadpool 3 is the only one. And I can't wait for it. Um, I hope it doesn't disappoint. I really hope it doesn't. Cheers to this. I'm gonna light one up for this. Mm. Actually, I'm gonna light this up for the next one too. Because... It is now being said that none other than sexy, hot as fuck, you better go to the bathroom and masturbate right now. Sydney Sweeney has joined the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Rumor, rumor not confirmed, but it's pretty much a done deal, they say. Marvel says everybody's masturbating to the little girl. Everybody's watching their shows and their movies, even though she's a really bad actress. But everybody wants to see her like this with her nipples out and in underwear. Innocent. Sexy as fuck. So Marvel has hired her. Speculation has been mounting. I want to talk to you a little bit about speculations. The first one that came on to my head when I heard about this, to be honest with you. Emma Frost, the White Queen. The X-Men have not been introduced. They need to bring her in as a character that has not been mentioned at all. And I think the wisest thing that uh, Kevin Feige should do is make the X-Men young. Except for Wolverine, of course. But make the X-Men young so that these characters could last a while in these actors. I think she would be hot as fuck. She's got the body to be Emma Frost. 100%. She's got the body. Mm-hmm. She's got the face, the look. For sure. Big titties, big fucking pepperoni nipples. She's ready to be Emma Frost, is all I'm saying. It's perfect. Now, there is a, the whole thing that Emma Frost should probably be portrayed as someone who is a little bit older and not as young as the other X-Men. So, it is one of those things that falls a little bit on the bottom of the fucking totem pole. <clears throat> But one of the ones that people have also mentioned. But she could also be the MCU's Gwen Stacy. Not necessarily actually be Gwen Stacy spider ghost. Ghost spider or whatever you want to call her spider girl. From alternate universe. But be Gwen Stacy. Actual Gwen Stacy in Peter, pa Peter Parker's life, Tom Holland. Because we've had Zendaya, who is Mary Jane, even though she wasn't a redhead and she was a Mexican. Or a Blackskin, whatever you want to call her. Um, and then we had uh, Liz, Liz Parker, which was a, a Blackskin also. Puerto Rican, whatever you want to call her. Everybody being woke as fuck. But we haven't had a, a, a Gwen Stacy in Peter Parker's life. And this little girl is young enough to be Gwen Stacy in brand new Peter Parker's college life. Not only that, she's hot as fuck. And I gotta tell you, if Tom Holland starts doing scenes with this little girl, bye-bye Zendaya. He's gonna break up with your ass because he's gonna say, wow, I've never had big titties before and I ain't going back to that flat-chested piece of ass. Ah, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> So, it could be Gwen Stacy. But most of the internet seems to be convinced, for whatever reason, that she's going to be Felicia Harding, the black cat. 
which is even sexier, which fits more of her personality and her bad acting style. Because if she was going to be Gwen Stacy, she would have to be on screen a lot and say a lot of emotional lines, which this little girl cannot deliver. She's mostly sexiness and come fuck me type of shit. And I think that, yeah, Felicia Harding, the black cat, is probably more in line with the range that this little girl is capable of doing. So, yes, Felicia Harding is a very top candidate as who she might be and Peter in, in the MCU. But I still, me personally, I don't want to dismiss the X-Men. And it is going to be called X-Men. Fuck you if they call it the Mutants or Children of the Atom or some shit. It better be called X-Men Feige. You don't call it X-Men. I'm not spending any money. I'm going to download it with my VPN, you piece of shit. You better call it X-Men. I don't want to discount the X-Men. I still think she could be an X-Men. She is sexy enough to be rogue. 100% this little girl. Do you go with the young X-Men? This little girl 100% is sexy enough, voluptuous enough to be rogue. And she'd be perfect. She'd have to nail the southern accent, which I know she doesn't naturally have. But she could be a good rogue. You know, a couple of acting classes, maybe dub her fucking dub her voice. She could just move her lips and dub it. You just need her to look good on screen. Don't even give her any lines. Rogue. Oh, fighting. That's it. Big titties jiggling everywhere. That's all you need. I think she would be a very good rogue, my personal opinion. Either way, we know that Sydney Sweeney supposedly has joined the MCU. So, I will cheers. I will smoke and cheers to that, motherfuckers. Here we go. Hmm. There we go. That was for Sydney Sweeney. Uh, but let's end tonight with what everybody has been waiting for. None other. <laughs> X-Men 97 Episode 6 Last episode Episode 5 I could not praise it enough I loved it from the beginning to the end. This was one of the shittiest episodes they've done. To me. It was so fucking bad. This was made for a child with ADD or a really low attention span. Or I don't know what the fuck they did here. This episode was called Life and Death Part 2. Which was supposed to be the continuation of Storm and the Forge story from Life and Death Part 1. Because remember, the second episode, or the third episode, was called Life and Death. No, it was called Moment Montendo and Slash Life and Death Part 1. Which was 15 minutes of the Jubilee story and then 15 minutes of the Rogue story. Separate. This one was called Life and Death Part 2. Which you would think would be, it didn't have a slash in it, just Life and Death Part 2. Which you would think would be the continuation of the Storm and Forge storyline for one hour 
to really fully flesh it out and make you fucking love it and understand it. No! There's two stories in this. And instead of doing 15 minutes and then 15, no, they, they do five and then back and forth. They do three minutes, back and forth, five minutes, back and forth, back and forth to each episode. And it confuses the shit out of you more and more and more. But let me get into, first of all, the episode that makes no sense and shouldn't have even been in here because I don't even know why it's called Life and Death Part 2 because this has nothing to do with Life and Death Part 1. Charles Xavier is in the Shi'ar Empire. And I don't understand because I watch a lot of these fucking nerds online. I watch their videos because we, I wait until Friday to do this podcast, but I want to see what they thought, these pussies. And a lot of them, they're all like, Charles is alive? Of course Charles is alive, you fucking pendejo! The very last episode of the old series, Charles says, I'm going to die, so Lalandra is going to take me to space. Where they're going to be able to treat my disease so that I can live the rest of my days. I'm not going to die. And in space, because when you're in space, time works differently. You X-Men are going to die old and shit. And Charles will still be alive in space. Aging normally. You idiots. Oh, oh Charles Xavier. Exa- He's always been alive. He said on the last episode when the fucking series ended back in 1994. Idiots. But anyways, Charles Xavier's alive. Big surprise. And now he's like the king. Lalandra wants to marry him. And he's the king of the Shi'ar Empire. But the Shi'ar don't accept him because he, he looks just like them. But he's human. And so they don't like him, even though he has two arms, white skin, two legs, and talks English just like the rest of the aliens around him. So they tell him, the only way you're going to be accepted as king and as one of us is if you let us erase all your memories from Earth. How the fuck... Does that even make any sense? It's just like, oh, the only way we're going to accept you, you fucking human, is if you let us erase all your memories of being human. He's still human. Idiots. It don't make no sense. So Charles doesn't agree. And instead, and mind, like I said, this episode goes back and forth, but I'm just, I'm showing you the first the way it should have been shown, this should have been called Charles's bullshit slash Life and Death Part Two. But anyways, Charles's bullshit is what I'm talking about. He asked her projects them all into some kind of classroom like children and tries to teach them about being woke and acceptance and bullshit. Oh my god! But in the worst part. Is out of nowhere. Fucking Charles. During his astral projection. And teaching a lesson. He sees Gambit. And everyone everyone is a skeleton. And kind of showing him. Like oh you left. And we all died in Genosha. No explanation. As to why Charles. Is having these visions. In the fucking astral plane. By the way. While he's projecting them and shit. But he tells Lalandra, I don't want to be your king. I need to go back to Earth right now. My X-Men are dying. Fuck you. I hate this. It's this. I don't even know why it's called Life and Death. It should be called Life and Death slash Charles, whatever the fuck, whatever you want to call it. This is a separate episode. Didn't That doesn't make any sense, by the way. But a separate episode. But let's move on to the main episode. Life and Death. What it's supposed to be called. And it's Storm. And the fucking demon had bitten Forge. And so Forge is dying from the demon. And shit that bit, bit him. And shit. And so then. This is a crazy part. The demon starts trying to attack Storm. And shit. And then Forge. 
out of nowhere comes out and mind you he was in the bed look i'm showing you right now he was in the bed with all the disease dying and shit and then the demon starts attacking fucking storm and out of fucking nowhere forge all of a sudden is well and healthy and has some kind of doctor strange book and starts using doctor strange powers to stop the demon and I'm all like, okay, hang on. I know. Because I'm a nerd. In the comic books, Forge is a Native American. And he's supposed to be a shaman who didn't want to be a shaman and ran away. So he does supposed to have these abilities even though that's not his mutant power his mutant power is that he's smart as fuck with electronics and can come up with anything you ask him to and can also figure out how things work he's just smart tony stark is his mutant power this other shit is what the indians were teaching him but he ran away my grievance or piss offness is the fact that you don't explain why the fuck he can suddenly use these powers to the average I don't know what the fuck is going on viewer and it pisses me off because you had a whole hour to fuck Charles Xavier's story you had a whole hour to focus on this and this is what you did some ADD bullshit but let me continue out of nowhere, he uses his powers, no explanation. He supposedly stops this demon. But then the demon takes Storm, and Storm starts fighting with the demon. And again, no fucking explanation. But Storm, out of anger, gets her powers back. And what seems to me like she absorbs the demon because you see all these feathers morph into her and she gets her black old school 80s costume which by the way look cool as fuck and then they showed this badass man of steel montage where she's flying through the desert with horses showing off her powers and shit being a badass and she goes back and heals fucking forge what how did any of this happen how was she able with her powers to absorb this demon why does she now have her 80s style and her powers like nothing is explained the visuals and the animation is so badass. But there's no explanation. No reasoning behind what you just witnessed. It just suddenly happens in front of your eyes. And you're supposed to accept it. Because it looks cool as fuck. Yes, it looks cool as fuck. But hello, I have a fucking human brain that needs to know why the fuck this happened. But no. You're not no you're not let known. You don't know why it happened. And you don't know why she has some sort of green gel all of a sudden that rubs on Forge, which by the way, didn't Forge wasn't he good? Oh he was well and he used magic, but now he's sick again? Doesn't make any sense. No explanation in this episode about why any of this is happening. But Forge is good again. And they're watching TV and they find out that Genosha got killed and Storm freaks out. And that's how Storm's story ends. <sighs> and then we get to something that I feel that they fucking dropped the ball with. They show... Uh, Trask, I think that's his name or whatever. 
And Sinister is the one behind him, and he told them, you're like, you keep on doing what I told you to do, and let the Sentinels out, and this is all working according to plan. So Sinister is the bad guy, and it's not Apocalypse, and it's not the future, um, fuck, I should have looked this up. It's Bison, I want to say Bison, but it's not, maybe it's Byron, or something like that. It's a guy with the letter B. It's a cyborg. It's a man that's half cyborg, half his face, and he kind of looks like Cable. That guy travels back to the past. He's the one who comes up with the Sentinel. They, it's in the comic books. He's the one who comes up to, to with the Sentinels and Master Mold. He's the one behind everything. He's a Cable villain. When Cable said he's coming... In the other episode, I thought that's who they was talking about. They're grabbing stuff from the comic books. But no, it's Mr. Sinister, which makes no fucking sense. Because all Mr. Sinister was supposed to be doing is finding a way to create Cable in order to stop a apocalypse from taking over the world and shit. Because even though Mr. Sinister is evil, he also doesn't want Apocalypse to rule over everybody. He was trying to create the perfect mutant to destroy Apocalypse. This is ass. The last episode was so fucking good. I hate being a nerd. I hate owning hundreds of comic books and knowing the storylines. Because when I see shit like this, it pisses me off. It makes me angry. The last episode was so good. And for them to go from that to this makes me angry. This episode was stupid. It had no explanations for neither Charles' side of the story or for Storm's side of the story. It's so many, like, what the fucks? Why? No explanations. Everything was just thrown in there. Eye candy, eye candy, Dragon Ball Z. Fuck you. This, I, fine, maybe I'm judging it. This is for kids. I understand. This is for a 12, 11 year old whose mind isn't as developed. I understand that kind of ass. But this is X-Men 97. This was taken from my childhood. Marketed for a person like myself who grew up with it. This is no good. This is no good to me. I've only liked last week's episode. And that's it. That's all I've liked. It's been a disappointment to me. There is three more episodes left. And they're all part one, part two, and part three. Which are hopefully will be a lot better. And will be more in line to episode five. I hope they will be more in line with episode five. Uh... Actually, I think there's four episodes left. So the next one might be ass. The last three are all part one, part two, and part three. Which I think will be more in line with episode five. And they'll probably make more sense. And I'll probably enjoy more. I'm not happy with this episode. I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with these gifs that I'm adding every fucking I don't know you guys like this. I love these fucking I've been I've downloaded so many I just have it to this this thing that I just you know I have all these fucking X-Men and Spider-Man all these people just fighting each other just lying around and shit uh, just, But that's just for my own entertainment because I'm a geek uh, <laughs> But anyways, I'm loving this shit uh, But I am done ranting and bitching for tonight. Uh, appreciate each and every one of you motherfuckers for being here and for watching and shit, subscribing, like, pressing the like button, all that ass. Uh, continuing this broadcast. The Wolf Pack, you know what it is? What's up, Trevino, Super Saiyan Joku, motherfuckers? Uh, P, thank you for being here tonight. I'll leave you with a little bit of life advice. Okay. Uh, and I'll just uh, put it like this. Uh, actually, I don't have any life advice. I'll just... Uh, fuck. You know what? I do have a life advice. 
Don't ever, don't judge somebody by the way that they look. And shit. Uh, just because I get judged all every day. I gotta lie. Every day. I see people the way they judge. And it's like, you know what? You know, uh, you shouldn't judge somebody by the way they look. Uh, because you might be talking to a millionaire. One day. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So cheers to say Joku and cheers to fucking uh, Gomer Kyle and the Wolfpack motherfuckers and everybody out there watching tonight. Hope you all have a good weekend and a good Friday night. And I'll see you next week. Cheers. Wolfpack. What the fuck, man? Fucking running like lady, eh?